This is Dr. Ray Henry. Thanks for joining us on the Moment of Destiny broadcast. Today we're looking at a choice that all of us have to make in life, His plans versus our plans. And oh, what a difference it makes when we follow His plans. So today we're looking at the attributes of following His plans in life. We welcome you today during this worship hour. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for joining us in the TV audience. You know, my son-in-law's mother has a favorite singer, and it's probably some of your favorite singers, and that is Frank Sinatra. Well, she's from Brooklyn, New York, and, and uh, that's her home state, hometown, and and she loves everything about New York. Well, she's living in Florida now, but she goes to New York several times a year. And one of the favorite songs that she likes about New York is Frank Sinatra's song. Many of his songs, I Did It My Way. You remember that song? Here's one of the verses. I did it my way, and now the end is here. And so I face that final curtain. My friend, I'll make it clear. I'll state my case of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that is full. I've traveled each and every highway and much more, much more. I did it. I did it my way. Now that sounds good. It's a beautiful song. And, and everybody loves that song from Frank Sinatra, especially if you're from New York. But that's not really what your theme song should be all about. It should not be, I did it my way. It should be, I did it his way. And today we're going to look at a contrast, a big contrast. His way versus your way. Now you're to examine yourself. You're to evaluate yourself today. Am I going His way or am I going in my life my way, doing my own thing, not really caring about His way, just doing what I want to do? If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 25 because it mentions several times, David does, about going in life God's way. And that's the most important thing that you could do today. You're not going to be perfect. You're not going to be sinless. But to live a godly life is to go God's way. At least you're on the right pathway. You're heading towards God. So let's look at some verses that talk about the attributes of going in life His way. You want to do that with your life. If you want to receive the good things in this world and in your life, you're going to have to go His way. Listen to what David says in Psalm 25. David says, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth. Teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day long. I trust all day long for you to lead me. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been from ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he will teach sinners in the way that they should go. The meek will he guide in judgment. The meek will he teach his way. And that's what we want. We want to be humbly submissive to God that he will teach us. What is your way, God, in this situation? What is your way to guide me in life? He says he'll teach you if you humble yourself and submit yourself to his ways. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. David says, for thy name's sake, O Lord, Pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. Many are my sins, David is saying. And Lord, I need your forgiveness of all of them. And last of all, what man is he that fears the Lord? If you have a respect and honor of true fear of God and his holiness and his righteousness, what man is he that feareth the Lord? 
Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. Him shall he teach the right way, the good way that he should choose in life. So that's the question this morning. Are you going his way in life or are you going your way, doing your thing? Total disregard of God and the principles of God, the teachings of God and the ways of God. Which way are you going? You're either heading towards destruction or you're heading towards eternal life. You remember Jesus talked about a narrow way and he talked about a broad way that leads to destruction. If you're going the way, the many, many, many ways of the world and teachings and principles and and philosophies of the world, if you're going the broad way of the world, uh, Jesus himself says that's the broad way that leads to destruction. He says, but there is a narrow way. There's a narrow way. And that narrow way is his way that leads to not only everlasting life, but it leads to goodness and peace and joy in this life. So today we're looking at the attributes, the attributes of his way so you can evaluate yourself as to what you're following in your life. Number one, his plans, his ways are activated by divine goodness. You have heard it says God's good. We say it in church all the time. We sing a hymn about this. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. So first of all, his plans for your life are activated by divine goodness. And most people will quote this if they, if they have any familiarity with the church. If they've been in church very long at all, they'll quote Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not calamity to give you a future and a hope. But I like the Century Bible. The Century Bible, I believe, has a very clear word from Jeremiah 29, 11 and its translation. Listen to what it says. I have good plans for you, not plans to hurt you. I will give you hope and a good future. Of course, all of us remember David, the young shepherd boy and Then he grows up and he becomes a warrior and then he becomes king. And and David had gone through the valleys of life and the mountaintops. He had climbed up the mountaintops and, and he had killed a bear and a lion and he had killed Goliath. He even had to take the kingdom back from his son Absalom. He had seen the good times and the, the bad times But overall, as David looked back on his life, he believed in the goodness of God. That God was always working all of these things out for something good in his life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. King David said there in Psalm 23, I have found through the valleys, the bad times, and the mountaintop experiences, that God was always faithful. And even though I went through pressure-filled times, God always pulled me through, and He worked those situations out for my good. Now, I like what one of the uh, commentaries I read on that psalm 23, that last verse, surely goodness and mercy. There was a Presbyterian pastor and professor, Hatton Robertson. And this is what he said about God's faithfulness and God's goodness. He said, God sends goodness and mercy to follow us. You can live with confidence if you recognize the goodness of God. You can live with confidence. Though you go through bad times and good times, God always brings you through 
and works it out for best in your life. He says you can live with confidence in life if you recognize the goodness of God in your life. You remember this is what Joseph told his brothers, his evil, jealous brothers. They sold him into slavery. He was accused by Potiphar's wife of something that he didn't do. And then he was forgotten about in prison. And then he was raised up to be prime minister, second in command, right under Pharaoh. And he led them out of that famine and all the countries around Egypt. And this is what he said to his brothers. You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. You thought you were doing bad and evil things in my life, but God turned it all around for something, excuse me, something good for me and also something good for you and something good for Egypt and all these countries that were going through famine for seven years. God meant it for good. You can live with confidence if you believe in the goodness of God to turn all of these things around for something good. good. Number two, his plans are not only activated by his goodness, his plans are accompanied by divine guidance, divine guidance. David says, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. I want to know what your will is, God. I want to know what your guidance is. So his plans are accompanied by divine guidance. Now, there are four things I want to tell you about divine guidance. Number one, divine guidance is clear guidance. If it's from the Lord, it's going to be plain and simple and clear. Number one, divine guidance is clear guidance, not confused. Now, if you're confused today, that means you have two doors open. You've got one door open to God, trying to listen to Him as a Christian, and you've got another door open to the devil, the world, the flesh, and the devil. And when you've got those two doors open to your soul and your spirit, you're going to have confusion. But the Bible says in Psalm 27, 1, that divine guidance is clear. Teach me thy way, O Lord. Lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Solomon tells us that God gives us clear, direct guidance as to what his will is. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path and he'll show you exactly what is the best path, the very best path that you're to take in life. David says, what man is he that fears God here in Psalm 25? What man is he that fears God? Him shall he teach him in the way that he shall go. Many of you are confused in life. You don't know which way to go in life. Many of you are young people. You're trying to choose a college. You're trying to choose your career. You don't know what way to go. You're trying to do your own thing. But if you'll submit yourself to his plans and his way, he will choose for you the right path to take in life. So number one, his guidance is clear, clear guidance. His guidance was clear in the Old Testament to Achan. Achan was instructed as well as all the Israelites. When Jericho fell, they were instructed, don't take of anything in the spoils of victory there at Jericho because we're going to use the silver and gold and other things in the construction of the temple later on. Don't take anything. Your guidance was very, very clear for Achan, but he didn't listen to God's guidance and he rebelled against it and he stole those three different kinds of articles and he hid them in his tent and then his life and his whole family's life was destroyed. Many of you, you know the guidance of God. You know the word of God, but you are rebelling about the known will of God and the known word of God. Achan knew the clear guidance of God, but he rebelled against it and his life was destroyed. You remember King Saul and Jonathan 
and the sons of Eli. They were in battle against the Philistines. And they were very clearly taught, do not bring the Ark of the Covenant into battle. Whatever you do, don't take that Ark out of the tabernacle and bring it into uh, the battle with the Philistines. But the sons of Eli brought that Ark into battle and the Philistines won. They didn't win. The Israelites didn't win. The Philistines won. The enemy won. And that ark was stolen for 20 years. No longer was it in the tabernacle. The Philistines had it in their territory. Now they wanted to get rid of it because it had brought some plagues to certain of their cities. But they had clear guidance not to do something. And Saul's life and Jonathan's life and the sons of Eli and even Eli's life himself, when he fell backwards off of the throne there, his life was taken. They had clear guidance as what to do concerning the Ark of the Covenant. Paul was given clear guidance when he was on that ship going from Caesarea into Rome. He had appealed to Caesar and they put him on a ship with soldiers and the ship hit a storm for 14 days. They did not even see the sunlight. It was headed for disaster. And it went to the island of Malta. And they were trying to, to land that ship safely. But God, through an angel, sent instructions to Paul. You tell everybody that they must remain on that ship if you were going to save lives. Now, some of the Roman soldiers wanted to take these little boats, these little skiffs and jump off and, 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 and take them into the land. And they were wanting to shoot the prisoners. But God, through Paul, told them, look, you are to abide in the ship. That's your instructions. Abide in the ship. And if you don't, there's going to be a loss of life. And they followed. They followed Paul's advice that he got from the angel of the Lord. And the Bible says that there were over 276 lives that were saved because they listened to God's instructions. So God's guidance is very clear. If we do what he wants us to do, if we don't rebel against his commands, we will see the goodness of God happen in our life. It's not only clear, but it's continually. God will lead, lead us all the days of our life if we'll just submit to him and follow his leadership. Number three, God's guidance is gradual. He doesn't tell you everything at once. He doesn't tell you everything at the beginning. It's kind of like a little child. What do they do with young children, two, three, four, five, six years old? They start teaching them sounds and phonics, simple sounds and phonics. And, and then they'll teach them a few simple words. And then after that, they'll get these little books, children's books. And they're able to read maybe one sentence on a page. And they grow in their ability to learn and to read. You know, this is what God did with his disciples when they started following them. He did not tell his 12 disciples everything that was going to happen to them. This is what he says. He says, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them at this time. You can't take what I'm going to tell you is going to happen after three years. You remember after three years and Jesus had ascended that all of the apostles lost their lives except John on the island of Patmos. And he was imprisoned and he was put in a, a cauldron, a ball in oil. They tried to kill him, but he survived. Now, God didn't tell them all these bad things that were going to happen at the front. Little by little by little by little, he revealed to him his will for their lives. God's guidance is progressive. It's step by step, day by day, week by week, month by month. He's not going to tell you everything at one time. Psalm 37 says the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord and he delights in his way. You remember young Samuel. Here was Hannah carrying 
that young boy back to the temple. She, she made a promise with God that if, if God would give her a son, she would dedicate that son back to the Lord. And she took young Samuel back uh, to the tabernacle. And there he worked with Eli, the priest. He lit the candles in that place. And then one day as a young boy, probably eight, nine, ten, very young, he heard a voice, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. And he runs to Eli's room. I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. And he runs to Eli's room and he, he, Sam, Eli said, hey, look, I didn't call you. Uh, but if you he hear it again, you say, Lord, speak. Your servant listens. And so sure enough, God spoke again to Samuel, young Samuel. And he told him what was going to happen. He began to prophesy little by little. Until one day, as, as Samuel grew in his ability to hear from God as a prophet and priest, he began to listen to God and he knew God's voice. One day, uh, he was there at Mizpah uh, where they prayed and sought the Lord. And, and one day there was, a, there was a young man and his servant on their donkey coming into the city. It was young Saul who was going to be chosen as the first king. And so he has dinner with Saul, this young man, and he tells him what's going on in his life. He tells him what God's going to do with his life. And he says, by the way, Saul, on the way back home, this is what's going to happen to you. You're going to meet two people at Rachel's tomb and they're going to tell you that they've found the two donkeys of your dad, Kish. And now they're looking for you. And then you're going to go on down the road to Mount Tabor and you're going to see three men. And these three men are going to give you three loaves of bread and a bottle of wine. And then Saul, just to confirm that my prophecy about you is going to come true, that this is from God, you're going to keep going down the road and you're going to beat a bunch of prophets that are prophesying. And the Spirit of God is going to come upon you, young Saul, and you will begin to prophesy. You see, Samuel, little by little by little by little, God's Guidance is gradual. You learn how to listen to God and to listen to his word and to to interpret what he is saying to you in life. Do you know that God is always at work around you? That's one of the principles in experiencing God. God is always working around you, whether you know it or not, whether you see it or not. And we learn as we grow in our Christian life, how to recognize what God is doing in our life. God speaking through so-and-so. God saying something in this circumstance. And so we need to grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. His guidance is clear. His guidance is gradual. And His guidance is personal. His guidance is also continual. But his guidance is personal. It's just a word for you. Saul was given personal guidance right after he had that conversion experience on the way to Damascus. Lord, what would you have me to do? Are some of you saying that? Some of you are saying that in your life. Hey, Lord, I've reached this point in my life. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to change vocations and careers? Do you want me to go to college? Do you want me to do this? Do you want me to marry uh, Jane or Susan or, or Jim or John? God, what would you have me to do? Saul asked that question. God, what would you have me to do? Hey, this is, this is what it is. His guidance is personal. Hey, Saul, I want you to go to the next city, Damascus, and go to the street, very particular, very pinpointed. Go to a street called Straight in Damascus and go to the house of Ananias who lives on that street and he will tell you what to do. His guidance 
is personal. He'll show you what He wants you to do. He'll help you make the choices that you need to make today if, if you're going His way, if you're following His plans. But the question today is, are you following your plans, doing your little old thing, and you're confused, and you're defeated in life? Why don't you quit following that way, deny yourself, and take up your cross and follow Him? Why don't you start following His plans? And His plans are clear and for your good, and they're personal. They're exactly what you should do with your life. But His plans are accentuated by His divine grace. God is working through His mercy and grace. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. I like what Peter Lord said in his book on hearing God. You know, we hear a lot of voices today and, and many of them are negative and evil and bad and wrong. But this is what Peter Lord said in his book on really hearing for God. This is what he says. God's voice will bring encouragement. He said 90 percent of what God says to me is encouragement. The Lord knows my constant need of encouragement. And 90% of what he tells me is in the area of encouragement. He goes on to say this, God's voice is not only encouragement, but God's voice will bring peace. God will never cause you to worry and fret. A sure sign that you have heard from God is the peace that you have in your heart. His plans, God's plans, when He speaks and when He guides an individual or a church, they, His plans are accentuated by His grace and mercy. Today you have heard the blessings and the goodness of following God's plans. So what will it be? Would you take a moment right now to acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord and to follow His plans? Pray with me right now. Pray this prayer. Dear God, I know you love me because you sent your only begotten son to die on the cross for my sins. I trust you, Jesus, right now to be my savior and to be the Lord of my life. And I want to follow your plans for my life. Come into my heart through your Holy Spirit and let me know that I am accepted as a child of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Now, if you prayed that prayer, we certainly want to hear from you. Give us a call. The number's on the screen. And most of all, we would like to see you this Sunday in church at 11 a.m.